Now, most people, when they think of a sales funnel, they will think that, hey, we start from the top and then we go to the bottom. And that is totally wrong in my opinion. How to achieve predictable sales growth through your sales funnel. And this session will take about one hour depending on how many questions that you have. Now, as a business owner, or if you're in a business, right, most businesses have this problem. They are not likely growing as fast as they should. And why they are not growing as fast as they should? Number one is because sales are unpredictable. Today, you might get a lot of sales. Next month, you don't know where you're going. Uh, one quarter, the next future quarter, you don't know what you're doing. And uh, you cannot uh, calculate. So whether you want to hire more people to fulfill uh, your job or you want to get more salespeople, you, you always have, as a business owner, an unpredictable sales cycle. And, and, and uh, this is very common. Salespeople tend to be pushy. Now, I love doing sales, and I think that as a sales owner or sales personnel, we need to be very professional in the way we are doing things. So here I show an image of a very sleazy, probably a car salesman. Uh, no offense to any car salesman, but in general, um, they have a very bad perception to always push things than you know, uh, being a very sleazy salesman, yeah? And of course, um, burning cash. We run ads, we run Facebook, we run TikTok, we run social media ads, uh, we invest in marketing, we do events, we hire salespeople, and we do not get the ROI. So this is something that a lot of businesses face, and I think that it's very common. So what we're going to do today is this. We're going to build a sales system. We are going to teach you how to do this, yeah? Uh, have a predictable sales system, a sales cycle. We're going to portray ourselves as trusted individuals when we represent our businesses or our company. And of course, uh, we want to be profitable. I think end of the day, uh, there's a lot of businesses that I know and they said, oh, my revenue is 100,000 a month, 200,000 a month, a million of dollars a month. But we ask them about the profit or the net profit, mm, they are probably two different stories, yeah? So you can make a lot of money, but end of the day, it's how much money left in your bank after paying all the expenses. Make sense? All right. So today, the goal is to give you a formula, a framework for predictable growth and put you on the 90 days path to doubling your sales. All right. So that's what we're going to do today. And hopefully by end of today, you'll be able to understand the whole framework. You'll be able to have this framework and you can take back to your business and you can do it on your own. All right. Now, I'm going to call this a value journey map. Today, you'll be hearing this a lot. Value journey map. Just uh, curious, how many of you have heard this before? I will explain to you and show you how to do a value journey map. But why do we need this? Is simply because we can't optimize what we have not documented. That means we have to document things. And sequence is very, very critical. Okay. When we do marketing, we have a sequence. Like any other things that we do, we must have a sequence and it must be uh, relevant to our business. And we're going to give you a flagship framework and how to do this value journey map today. So the principle of this is very simple. Big can be good. You can plan huge marketing. Small can be good. You can plan small marketing. It doesn't matter. But complicated is never good. So for example, if I ask you today now, now I'm going to ask you now, what or how much is the cost to acquire one customer? You should be able to tell me that or in order to acquire one customer, whether it's in the property line, whether it's in the line, whether you are in finance line, it doesn't matter what line you are. But if I ask you what's the cost to acquire one customer, you should be able to tell me, oh, in order to get one customer, I need about 300 ringgit, for example. Does it make sense? Are you okay so far? So the cost to acquire one customer, uh, you should be able to answer this as a business owner. Because if you want to get more sales, you just invest more um, to what you are doing to acquire more customers. If you do not know how to acquire customers, today you will learn how to do that. So do take note that complicated is never good. Yeah, Simple. And I'm going to share with you a concept that I've learned uh, where sequence really matters. I'm going to share this with a story. So from here, you begin to understand um, what is, why is important, what is, why is sequence so important? Suddenly I got stuck there. Okay, so I'm going to use human to human because I think all of us are human and uh, we can relate to this very, very well. Okay, so this is done by Desmond Morris. It's not written by me. And it's a book called Intimate Behavior. 
and it says that how does human intimacy happens? That means if you today want to have a goal, okay, to marry a woman, I'm going to use guy as example, um, target a woman, a girl, a girlfriend. How does human intimacy happen? Okay, so Desmond, according to Desmond, he says that there are twelve stages of intimacy. Twelve stages of intimacy. So let's assume we are in a um, bar. Okay, I'm very old to go to a bar, but let's assume we are in a bar and I'm looking to hook up or to get to know a girl and to go for dating and uh, to get married. Okay, bar is not a good example. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Let's have a coffee shop today. Okay. I'm in a coffee shop today and I'm looking for a um, partner, life partner. So there are 12 stages of intimacy. Do you want to guess what's the first stage? Okay, the first stage I'll give to you. And then you're going to guess the second, third, fourth, and we go on. Yeah. So first thing that we look as a guy to a woman is we look at the body. Again, not written by me, written by Desmond uh, Morris, according to his book, Intimate Behavior. Is it okay? So let's guess the second one. What do we look? 12 stages of intimacy, number one, eye to body. What's the second one? In, in a short while, I will share with you why is this relevant so much in marketing. Okay, the first, the second st stage, according to Desmond, is after you look at the body, you look eye to eye. That's where you want to start the communication, correct or not? Uh, <laughs> you want to look eye to eye. That's it. You get, you capture the body. I mean, you look at the body, you find it interesting, then you capture the eye. Does it make sense? Now, after the eye, we will talk. We will say hello. Somebody said this now. Uh, uh, Nabila Aisha, yeah, why? Yeah, you said hello, hi, my name is Charles, and uh, this is what I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. You talk to the woman or you have a pickup line, correct? What's number four? What stage of intimacy after you communicate? Yes, correct, we hold hands. Yeah, uh, if we are close to the woman or the woman allows us to be close, okay, let's put it that way, uh, she will allow a man to hold her hand. Okay, now the next stage is number five, it is arm to shoulder. So let's say we go to a movie, we used to pretend, you know, we are sleepy and then we ah, and then we put our arms around our shoulder and, and this, this is what we do. And I think as a guy to guy also, intimacy as a guy to guy, I think if I meet, if I were to meet any one of you, a guy, I will also will say, hello, my name is Charles, I'm in the business and then we shake hands together and then uh, I think that's probably what that we do. But I think if you're very close or closer, right, we'll say, hey, bro, and then we'll tap the back. That's what guys to guys do, right? It doesn't mean it has to be women. It can also be guy to guy. But what is the next stage after number five, arm to shoulder, will be arm to waist. And I think if there's a guy beside me and I hold his waist, I think that's very, very wrong. I'll probably get a punch because I don't think any guys will allow me to hold their waist. Um, a girl, if that's my girlfriend or my wife now, I think holding their waist is okay. Or maybe if you give a hug, I think girls, guys, depend on culture, I would say, a uh, hug is uh, considered okay, right? So, what are the last stage? I mean, the next stage. So, number seven will be obviously kissing. Uh, you kiss a girl once you're very intimate with a girl. And number eight, uh, hand to head. Uh, I, I, I think in, in, in our culture, this is written by Desmond, he's a Westerner. So, I believe that his, his culture, holding the head is something very intimate. Okay, running your hand to the head, things like that. I think it's very, very intimate. So probably just number eight. Okay. Now we are going to go more detail, and I know this is recorded, and I do not want to be viral or things like that. So I'm just going to go into hand to body. I think you all can imagine. And 10, 11, 12, 12 being the ultimate intimacy where uh probably after marriage you will probably act in these kind of things. So I just call it wow wow bow chick, bow chick a wow wow. And wow, wow. So, but can we as a guy go to a coffee shop, go to a, a library, go to anywhere, and straight away ask somebody, hey, do you want to wow, wow, wow with me? And probably some of you will say, yeah, I've done it before, I got lucky. But is that a thing that you can duplicate? Think of it as a business uh, owner now. When we meet people, the same thing that we do, one to four, yeah, then we exchange name card. But most of us, sometimes we make a mistake where the first encounter, we straight away go to wow, 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 which is, hey, do you want to do business with me? And probably people get turned off, but in culture of Asians, of East Asian, Malaysians, uh, we don't actually voice out that our displeasure and we just, you know, smile and then walk away, take our name card and throw in the dustbin. 
because you are trying to sell to me. That is where salespeople get a little bit pushy and you become that sleazy salesman. So if you are doing that way, do take note that in marketing, there is a sequence also, just like a relationship, just like an intimacy. And as we go on, you will learn more about this. So this is where I'm going to share with you the seven stages of marketing or the sales funnel. All right. So you're so used to a sales funnel, which is, uh, let me just open up a Google for you. And I will just show you a sales funnel. If you go to Google today, any sales funnel will be that that funnel. You understand what I'm saying? So it can be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, or can be five, or can be four. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a funnel, right? But the way that I look at sales funnel is a bit different. And I want to share this with you today. All right. So I call it a sales funnel. And this is what we call the customer journey map. So to me, there are seven stages starting from the first one, awareness, engage up to affiliate. So you can see that these people here are a little bit sad, but after using your product, after using your services, they should be happy. So that's why we are in business. If you're not in business or you're working for someone as an employee, do take note as any businesses, no matter what you do, you need to fulfill the customer's needs. That's why we are in business. Yeah, so to fulfill the customer needs, I'll break it down into seven stages. So here we go on the seven stages. I want to share this with you today. So awareness, engage, subscribe, convert, sales, advocate, affiliate. Okay. Now, most people, when they think of a sales funnel, they will think that, hey, we start from the top and then we go to the bottom. And that is totally wrong in my opinion. Okay. So you can see that all sales funnel, everybody will say that you start from the top. That means you put in your list on the top here, whatever funnel that you have. And then eventually the bottom here will be the money, the customers, where they'll buy from you, the sales. So I think that is wrong. And why do I say that? It's because you cannot optimize and you cannot calculate if you just throw on the top and hopefully things come out in the bottom. All right? So that is why uh, earlier I said don't do this because there's well a lot of leakage in your funnel. Okay? There'll be a lot of leakage in your funnel and you cannot identify where it is. So when you build a sales funnel, or in this case called a value customer journey map, what we do, we always start from the sales. That means we start from what do we want to sell, okay? I'm going to repeat that. We always start with what are we selling? What value are we giving to our customers? This is the first stage that we are doing. So we are going to go from here, and then we are going to go backwards. Now, I want to share this with you. If you are, have a system in place in your business, you can I, you can always do this. Yeah? You can go from front to back, back to front. It's totally fine. And I'll give you a hint here today. If you want to know whether someone is lying to you, very simple. Yeah? They look and tell a story, blah, 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 blah. You listen. And then if you want to validate the story, whether it's really true or not, you ask the person to repeat that in a sequence, in backwards. Most of the time, a liar cannot do that. Definitely, it's impossible for a liar to come out a sequence backwards if they are lying. Same thing with marketing. If your marketing funnel is broken, you cannot go backwards. But if a marketing funnel is working, you can go front to back, back to front. So in this case, we're going to go from back to front, which we want to start with sales. And then we're going to go to the conversion stage. I'll explain to you what are the stages. And then we're going to go to the subscribe stage, engage, and then awareness. Are we okay? So we're going to go backwards like this because if you do the calculation, it totally makes sense. Okay? So we're going to start with the sales first. And then from here, then we eventually go to advocate stage and the affiliate stage. In the sales, what do we sell? What's our call? What's our flagship offer? And how do we continue to deliver value after the first sale is made? So usually when we sell, we want to sell the normal things, yeah, the core things, uh, so that we can upsell them, we can cross-sell them, we can do a lot of things. So, so question one, what is your core flagship offer and how will you continue to deliver value after the first sale is made? Okay, a very simple question. So you write it down all that. So I'm going to give you an example of my business. I do education, I do certification, I do degree, I do diploma, digital marketing, and I also do masters in digital marketing. Does that make sense? So we have from certification to masters. But the most common, the most core that I can sell easily to customers will be the certification level. So for me, the core or the flagship offer will be the certification level in digital marketing. Is it okay? So after that, you can upsell them. 
you can cross sell them, you can do a lot of things, but important is to know the core, the understanding the fundamental of what you sell. So once we have that sales, we're going to go into the convert stage. We're going to work backwards here. In the convert stage, you will ask your customers, what are some of the aha moments that must transform your product into a nice to have, into a must have? So these are stages of marketing, all right? Stages of marketing, stages of market sales. So at the sales part, that means you convert a customer to a sale. But before you convert them into a sale, you have to convert them. So to me, convert means what are some of the aha moments that transform your product from a nice to have to a must have? So it comes from the word aha uh, understanding. So this is where I want to give you two examples. This is iPhone. So when you go to a shop, before the sales are made, okay, uh, I think the aha moment in Malaysia will be probably where you can play the iPhone, correct? The iPhones are in wire, I would say, but you can test it and you can know the speed. You can slide it, you can test the music, you can test the images, you can test the clarity of the iPhone. Not a problem at all. Yeah, so... Uh, they say, wow, this is such a cool phone. And the, the moment the phone is in your hand, you probably want to buy it already. Okay? And then if you don't buy it also, then you go back to your normal phone, which is probably, uh, I don't know, three years Android phone or three years iPhone. And compared to the new one, you feel the desire to want it. Does that make sense? So that is the setup for them to close the deal. So you go to the shop and then there's a aha moment. How about Tesla? Okay, so every single Tesla um, salespeople, I would say, are trained to do this. So they will go into a car, as you can see the photo here, and uh, the, the salesman or the person on the pink uh, purple shirt will say, are you ready? And the fellow will say, ready for what? And the moment the fellow says, ready for what? The salespeople will floor the Tesla car and it will go 0 to 60 miles per hour in 2.8 seconds. Or it will go to half a mile in 10.9 seconds. And they call it the launch. So once they say, are you ready? Ready for what? Press the oil or press the pedal, the petrol. Uh, the pedal, I would say. Not a really car person. And you will have the G-Force pulling back from you. And you can see that this, this guy here, uh, the colored guy, he will go like, oh my God, the shit, what everything. He will just be outstanding with the how the car performs. And that's where it's the aha moment for them to close the deal. So after that, how do you feel? Oh, this is an amazing car. So just imagine, eh, you go to a Tesla test drive and you finish. After that, you go back to your normal car. And you will be like, hmm, I really want that car. It's so amazing. It can go to 0 to 60. Give me that G-Force. You see, the sales people doesn't even tell the engine, the specs. Like, no, it's about the experience, the feeling. So that is where... The aha moment comes in. So in your business, if you are talking to a person, whether it's face-to-face -face or through a webinar or through one-to-many or through um, phone, what statement do you use to have the aha moment? What are your USP so that the customers will say that, hey, this is something that I really, really want and it's not nice to have, it's must-have. Okay? So that you can close the deal and get paid. So this is where you work backwards from the sales to the conversion, to setting up for the aha moment. Okay, so we're going backwards here. Yeah? Do take note, we're going backwards. So now, if you want people to commit to you, whether it's a, a meeting or whether it's a, a webinar like this, yeah, you have to give two kinds of commitment. And you can either choose one. It's either time or money so these are two things that when people committed to you you're one step closer to closing the deal okay if they give you their time or they give you their money so the entry point offers establish micro commitments again everything that we do are step by step to close the deal that converts strangers into friends so that is why we call it the conversion stage to convert strangers into friends so for me today um, some of you might be interested in what i'm doing uh, there won't be any sales talk today. I will just talk a little bit about my products at the end of it. But I'm not going to push you. I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to sell you anything. But probably like what I'm doing, you probably attend weekly. And when you're ready, you probably join my seminar, my certification, my diploma, my degree, or even my master's program. Does that make sense? So as I am sharing with you, I'm also doing converting you to become a friend. That's it. That's what we are doing. All right. So move on. Yeah. 
So now, if today I will ask you on my left here, okay, this brown color thing here, how many of you want this? And I give you free, free, totally free. All you need to do is pay for shipping. That's it. Does anyone want this? Do you even know what is this or not? This is Candle Week. Okay, not John Wick. It's not John Wick. It's Candle Week. So if you are a candle maker and I say that, hey, you want this for free, I guarantee you say, yes, I want it for free. Because you're a candle maker. And if there's something that you want, yeah, and you're willing to pay for it, the shipping, I'll give to you free. As a marketer, I know for a fact that you are a candle maker. So I can give you targeted information. I can have your address. I can have your contacts. I would have your credit card details. I know exactly you're a candle maker and you probably want to invest in things, buy things to make a candle. Okay. Now on the right side, we call it a guitar pick, a plectrum. Yeah. A guitar pick. If you are a guitar player, probably you want, uh, you know, custom made or one of a kind guitar pick. So if you, if you are not a music player, if you're not a guitar player, you probably are not interested. So these kind of things you can actually break down. Think of your business. What can you break down to give people so that you can really target the, the person? Okay. So for example, if today you are a cleaning service, okay, and cleaning service today is uh, expensive. Yeah. If you were to get a cleaning service, uh, quotation can be 1,000, 2,000 ringgit uh, per day if they are cleaning the whole house. I'm not talking about the maid, I'm talking about cleaning service here. Yeah? So it can be 1,000, 2,000 ringgit yeah, to clean, let's say after renovation, and you want them to clean, they do a lot of deep work, they actually charge a lot of money. My point is this, you can you splinter, can you break down your service so that you give the minimum to your customer for them to test you. And this is where, like I said, you want to convert strangers into friends, you probably give them, for example, like furniture steam cleaning. For example, you have been cleaning, and $20 only to test things out. Hey, uh, I have an offer today, 20 ringgit or $20. You just come and clean my sofa and chair. So what the customer will say, only $20 to clean my sofa? Sure, why not? So imagine now I'm a sales, I mean, I'm a cleaning person. I come, I bring in my equipment, I bring my mom, I bring my, my vacuum cleaner, I bring my cloth, I bring my soap. I come and clean your sofa and I said, ma'am, this is 20 ringgit. But at the same time now, I'm already in your house. So all I need to do is say, hey, ma'am, it looks like your carpet is a little bit dirty. Would you like to vacuum? And I'm already here. I've got all my vacuum cleaners are ready. You know, just an extra, maybe another $15. And then you probably will say, would it $15? Sure, why not? Let's do it. So now I've got a $35 sales. And as I was vacuuming your carpet, I cleaned your carpet, I'll take a look at your fan, your windows, and I repeat the same processes. So rather than sending a 1,000 ringgit package, can you break it down so that the customers can experience you first? That's what I'm sharing with you. Because at the end of the day, you want to get more customers, right? And you must have a formula, a system to do it. Okay? So um, uh, this is Fiverr. So for example, if you are an uh, interior designer, yeah, I've seen this all the time. Interior designers, uh, they are designed. I just I just got an interior designer to, to, to design my, 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 my home. And it cost me 1,500 ringgit for three impressions. They call it three impressions. One impression, 500 ringgit. But can you do something for free? Just to maybe a small part of the cabinet as interior designer. And if they like the design, they say, hey, I want a full design. Can you help me do? And this is where you can charge people. So at the end of the day, you can always print, break down whatever your product, your services, think about it, to offer to your customers. So remember, the job. At the conversion stage, it's not to close the deal. In fact, it gives a lot of ideas. It's not to close the deal, but it's to get a first date so that you can set up the aha moment. And that's it. Because we don't want to always sound so pushy, right? We just want to, you know, just set up the aha moment so that you can deliver the aha moment and let the customers decide whether they are interested or not. And then sometimes customers always tell me, hey, Charles, um, I'm, I'm ready to buy it. I'm ready to purchase. Uh, what are you doing? What are you selling? You know, they will ask me to buy things from me. Okay, so before the sales, we go into the conversion stage. You're okay with that? So once we have the conversion stage, we are going into the subscribe stage. Okay, we're working backwards here. Yeah? So at the end of the day, uh, question number four, you're going to ask is what valuable chunk of information that we can give to our customer in return for the contact information and permission to follow up? 
Okay, so this is what uh, in a subscribe stage will do. So uh, we call it the marketing. We offer a lead magnet. Okay, so when we don't registration, like what we are doing now is amazingly good. I add value to you, and you know my product. We exchange that. You can give a coupon code if you're doing e-commerce. So for example, um, you are selling in Shopee or you're selling in Lazada or you have your own Shopify store. You want people to first buy from you. You give a very good uh, coupon code. Uh, this is where I see a lot of mistakes done. They just give the code just like that. No, you need to ask them to uh, give you an email first and during the email, you send them the code because you need to capture the email for future follow-up. Webinar registration is just, you are doing it now live. Gated video series, you can do a mini class or a mini challenge. I've seen this very popular now. For high ticket items, they say like a gym uh, or a, uh, I'll give you a gym example. Okay, so this is a, a, a live coach, a, a gym coach. So he said, Come attend my five days live challenge, and I guarantee you will lose five kg in your week. <laughs> so it was only five kg in a week. Yeah, and people like women were like, Wow, amazing, five kg a week. Is it possible? Yeah, it's possible. You know what they'll do every single week? They'll ask you not to eat. They'll will just give you a single diet, whatever diet, and uh, you will lose easily 2 to 3 kg will be easily. So even though you don't have 5 kg, you will lose 2 to 3 kg because end of the day, he did some keto diet. He'll tell you what to eat, what time to eat. And it was a 5 days challenge. And people felt that, hey, you know what? I like what you're doing. I want to continue for one month, and one month will cost me a few thousand ringgit. So that was a gated video series, or you can do a mini challenge, for example. Or in return, you can also do a downloadable report. So this is for company, corporates, yeah. Uh, they like to do research, they like to use email. So if your business requires email marketing, in exchange for the email, you give them a good report, a good white paper to do things. So these are some of the examples that you can do to capture emails, which I gave you a lot of examples just now. Discount, but before you give the discount, make sure you capture the email, and then in the email, you automatically set the discount code for them so they can future follow up, yeah. So that was in a subscribe stage. So they collect the database. Collecting database, it's not just collecting name cards and doing nothing with it. Collecting database is collecting information, continually adding value so that people know you. So when you're, you're in your head all the time, people remember you. And I'm going to give you a good example now. Yeah, uh, All of you are ready? Tell me a brand if I mention the product. Is that OK? If I mention a product, you tell me the brand. If I talk about burger today, burger, what bread comes to your mind? Romley McDonald, Romley McDonald. Cool. Now, I'll give you one more so that it's easy. How about fried chicken? What bread comes to your mind? Burger King, KFC, Texas, KFC, KFC, KFC. So my point is this, and all of you will probably agree with me. Uh, McDonald's burger is the best burger ever. Yet 70% of you said McDonald's. Uh, KFC fried chicken, the best tasting fried chicken ever? Probably not. So my mom visited, uh, is with me today. She's uh, staying with me for the week. And I tell you, her fried chicken is one of the best in, in my life. But I will never ever think of fried chicken and my mom because my mom is associated with me with love, care, and things like that. Same as your business. Um, you are not adding value to your customer if you are not continually providing value to them. That's what I'm trying to say. But if a better marketer comes in and always, you know, is in front of the face by adding value or running ads or doing branding or they have more money to spend on you, you will lose even though your business offers better service, better product, better value to your customers. Does it make sense? So you need to be, attention to this is very important. So you really need to spend time educating your customers about your business. And that is something that you must do today. So by building a community, it's good. So this will share with you that we are in the subscribe stage. Uh, and I already proved to you that KFC is not the best tasting chicken. Uh, my dollars don't have the best tasting burger. But the moment I mention them, I mean, the product, the brand comes in. So look at your business. I hope that many of you will probably in the future say that, hey, if I think about digital marketing certification, I will think of DMC, my company. OK, that's all I want. And that's actually additional value to the business, right? So once we're in a subscribe stage, we're going backwards to the engage stage. So engage, uh, we're going to ask this question, what content can I provide? I told you to do content, right? So what kind of content can I provide so that we can turn a leverage into a class, into a stair, OK? So that people consume the content, all right? So this is very important today. So there are two kinds of content that you should do. 
Okay, and I also must do. Uh, as a business owner, we have information content or entertainment content, or you can add both together. So it's either information or either entertainment. So you can look at the shots on YouTube. You can look at TikTok. Uh, and people say that the new generation today, they have a very small attention gap. And it's not about the new generation today. It's just that everybody is so busy today. So if you want to give them content, it must be short information, entertainment. Now, having said that, end of the day, I want you to think about this. How do your customer, your target market, consume content? I already mentioned that today, most people are short attention span. But if you're targeting corporate and they're making a decision to purchase a, a trading or a product or a service, right? They want to read emails. They want to read blogs. So if your target market are those kind of people, you make sure that you are there. If your target market is uh, maybe someone teenagers, uh, below 20 years old, you guarantee you, the, you, you probably want to use TikTok for marketing. So the content depends on your target market, not depends on what you want on what you can do. Again, let me repeat that. Your content depends on your target market, how they consume it, not what you want, not what you can do. So for me personally, I love videos. I like to read. I like to read, yeah? And I love videos. And I learn a lot from YouTube, by the way. Uh, but this is how I consume content. You say that it's just me. But if you want to target me, you want to use TikTok. And I don't even have a TikTok account. Does that make sense? So it depends on your target market, how you want to contact. So I want to give you some examples. If you say, oh, Charles, writing content, so difficult. I'm going to give you, yeah? But before I give you how to do it, very simple only. Remember, it's not about the consumer. It's always about the consumer. It's not the product. I don't really care what you sell. I don't really even bother what you sell. Because you're focusing on what you sell, you're just being another sleazy salesman. It's always about me. It's always about your customer. It's always about who you are trying to market to. So it's always adding value to the people that you are focusing on your target market. So remember, it's always about the customer, not the product. And if you want to be an expert in your field, and I ask, and I want to tell you this, all of you today here, if you're in business today, you must be the authority in your field. And the best way to be an authority in your field, to be the leader in your field, it is to just do content. That's it. It's very different from being an influencer. Again, uh, it's different from being an influencer. You can be someone who just produce a lot of content that has a lot of value. So if you want to produ produce value, how do you do it? Just answer questions. That's it. So one of the best ways to answer questions is answer the public. Because if you want to know in your industry, in your topic, in your market, what people are asking, don't have to think. I'll give you the solution now. Answer the public. So answer the public, you can go to, let's do it together. You can go to answerthepublic.com. Okay. So once you open up your website, you come here, uh, you can put a product, your whatever product that you have or your service. You can put the country that you want, you can put the language that you want. So if you want to change this to Malay, you can. If your target market is Malay, for example, Chinese, you can change this to Chinese. Malaysia is the default uh, because I'm in Malaysia, but if you're targeting US market, you can just change to US. In this case, I'm going to put Malaysia. And the product that I'm going to put is durian because it's durian season now. Okay. Now, I'm not selling durian, but if I want to know what people are asking, if I want to be an expert authority in durian, I put durian, I put Malaysia, I put English, I click search. Now, do take note that this is a free version, so you can probably try about two, three times a day. Okay. Now, once I, oh, sorry, it says three times a day, two to three times, three times a day. So if you want to try more time, you need to register the account. So as you know, marketing, right? He's capturing your email now. So, uh, Capturing your email, it is probably the subscribe stage. So you capture your email, you do the follow-up, so it converts you to do the sales. Does it make sense? So now everything that you see, you begin to know how people are marketing to you. Okay, I'm going to share all this with you as we go along. But anyway, uh, we're in the engaged stage here, we're here. So now we got 724 results of durian. Okay, you got all this data here. So let me just um, the search volume is 40,000. Uh, if everything is total, cost per click is 0 0.54 cents. So you can just, let me just open up for you. Okay, let me accept this. So you can just go a little bit, you know, like this. Uh, what? Okay, it's a bit small. So let me just try to zoom in a little bit for you. Okay, so you can see that, you know, if every single day, you just answer one question in your 
video or in your blog or whatever that you want to do. And later, I'll use uh, ChatGPT to share with you. You can actually automate all these things very, very easily. So today, uh, okay, I'll just do it now together with you, yeah? Uh, which durian is the best? Which durian is bitter? Which durian is sweet? Which durian has small, small seeds? Blah, blah, blah. And then you can go on and you can go down and you can see more questions. And all you need to do is just answer every single day. Is there durian without thorns? Oh, yeah. China have created durians without thorns, yeah? And uh, without spikes. Durian without smell. I mean, probably for a Western market, right? I do not know. But these are people that are asking about all these things. So if you want to be a product expert, or a service expert, just answer one question a day, automatically you'll be an expert. And I can guarantee you this, yeah? whether it's in YouTube or TikTok, it's about consistency in posting content. Don't worry about the views in the beginning, just consistently posting content that has people searching for it. And instead of figuring how people search, answer the public as we do here, it's amazing. So now I'm gonna share a few chat GPT so that you can automate this very, very easily. Um, before I continue, how many of you do not or have not heard of ChatGPT? If you are in marketing and you are in business, you must do this. And I'm going to strongly suggest just go and, uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, invest in four. It's $20 a month. Just go and invest in four because 3.5 and four, major huge difference. I'm doing a sales talk for ChatGPT anyway. So anyway, coming back to this, uh, durian. So I'm going to take a durian. Uh, durian can drink tea. I do not know whether it can drink tea or not, correct? So I'm just going to put here, uh, I'm, in, uh, I'm in Malaysia and I want to uh, build content on durian. My first topic will be, uh, what's the first question now, by the way? Sorry, I need to go back. Uh, okay. Can eating durian lose weight? Write an article for me. Okay, this is the most simplest one. Just enter and it will be written for you. So you do not have to be a subject matter expert. You can use ChatGPT and you have the title there, the mystifying the durian, can anything this king of fruits eat weight loss? He gives you an introduction, he'll give you the body, he'll do everything for you. Okay. So again, I'm using four. If you have uh, first time seeing four, you will fall in love and you'll probably just invest in it. Uh, there's no affiliate money for invest uh, recommending you for but by looking at it it's totally amazing right you can just write a perfect article based on this and this is where it might get a little bit um you probably ask hey charles if everybody is using this how am i going to be different don't worry yeah? i've been teaching seo for the last 15 20 years still nobody does things taking action it is only referred uh, it's only exclusive for the one point I don't know, 0.1%, I think. You might learn, you might have the information, but taking action is two different things. So don't worry about competition at all. Don't worry, yeah, because they won't do. So anyway, looking at this, it's done here. Okay? So this is content, this is blog. Let's say you want to do video. Okay? <laughs> That's a lot of it. Okay, you want to do a YouTube video. I want uh, to put the same content in YouTube video. Walk me through, please. Always use the word please because they are AI. And the moment you don't use please, where they become Terminator one day and they start killing everybody, they won't kill you because you are polite to them. Remember that, yeah? Remember that. So anyway, I'm creating a video uh, involving uh, content for video. So you tell me step by step. Uh, on screen, an image of Durian text, the Mr. Fender Durian. Hello, Durian and to this, this. This. And welcome back to our channel. Have you wondered the King of Fruits and Beloved Durian? And let me show. You don't have even to think. Now, this is not an AI class. I probably do an AI webinar one day, right? You can take this script, put it into another software, another one button, everything is done for you. So there's no excuse today why you cannot be a um, leader, a top leader in your industry. Okay? You must remember that, yeah? There's no excuse why you can't do a thought leader. I give you blog, I give you video. If you want to do shorts on TikTok, you just ask the same thing. I'm going to stop generating this. But you can do anything you want, okay? YouTube shorts, TikTok, just ask the fellow to do for you. He will do for you. So those are in the engaged stage. By producing content, you'll be a thought leader. You'll be the authority in your business field. And of course, the first one, awareness. 
how do qualified prospects find out about our brand? So to me, you can only use this four plus one five today uh, to create awareness. If you're running marketing online, you either run ads, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Google Ads, and I will end in TikTok today because this is something that we cannot deny TikTok, yeah? So Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Google Ads, and TikTok, run ads there. Now, for Facebook uh, posting content, you must be caught regularly, okay? Like two or three content in, a, in fact, everywhere, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, also the same thing. There's a formula to it, but I'm just gonna tell you that you need to post two to three times a day to have the traction. But to me, when I want to create awareness, I really like to use paid ads. Why paid ads? Run ads, targeted, easy to calculate, sell the product, you know, easy going. So my point is this, awareness, you can run ads or produce a lot of content, okay? So this is where you can do things. Once you finish the whole thing, once you get a customer, you need to advocate. Advocate means, you know, how do we encourage our existing customers to be happy, to have successful, uh, successful things to say about your product or your brand? That's it. So if you're adding value and continue adding value, your customers will wear your shirt. They're happy to wear your shirt. They're happy to promote you. They're happy to have your stickers. So these are all called brand equity that once you have your customers, you need to continue adding value to them. And this is what I'm doing today, adding value to you all. Because there will be so long where I didn't add value, I just want to add value on a continuous basis. That's what we're doing. That's it. So why do we do this? Simply because the brand equity, when people ask referral, is so amazing, which is the formula for a testimonial. So I love to ask testimonial from my customers. And I want to share with you that how I do it. Okay. So we do testimonials. I'm not going to play this. Uh, uh, totally amazing because it builds trust, testimonials, right? So what I like to do is always I tell my students, hey, can you give me a video testimonials? When you give me the video testimonials, I will give them something in return. So for example, more videos, more training, or an ebook, or whatever, or sometimes even money, cash. Okay? Now, why do I do that? Is to incentivize people to give me a video testimonials. And these are people who are happy. I'm not asking people to lie. These are people who are happy. You just have to push them a little bit to give them video testimonials. And not only that, I always tell them this. When you give me a video testimonial in an advocacy stage, there's a formula to it. You introduce yourself first. Okay? You don't talk about me. You introduce yourself first. You talk about your business. You talk about who you are, what you do. You tell me your aha moment. You tell me your OVP, your online value proposition, your aha moment. What differentiates you from every other competitors outside there? What is things that, you know, nice to have, but now it must become a must-have because you're offering that. You talk about your product, your services first. And then only you tell and tell one thing, one thing that you learn most about the training and one thing you like most about the class. That's it. So half of the session, you talk about yourself. Half of the session, you talk about me. And when I go to people, when I go to customers, you just imagine today, if I want to build trust to people, I open up my videos and I say, hey, I have 3,000, uh, not 3,000 now, I have probably 300 testimonials that people are giving uh, good ratings compared to any other training providers. They don't do that. So that already gives me a wow factor that the trust that is built even in the first day meeting, it is so high already. So you must use video testimonials uh, because you and I know that you know Facebook reviews or Google business reviews can be manipulated, can be fake. Just like the real case now, you know, Jocelyn Chia uh, went and did this, this uh, where, did, where did she go and do a comedy talk, right? Uh, in 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 in, uh, in US, I call Comedy Central. If I'm not mistaken, I'm not sure. But all the Malaysians, we got triggered. A lot of us went to the uh, center and give a one star review. And you're not even there. And of course, Google can actually remove all these things, but it can actually destroy uh, a business overnight. Yeah, just so that you know. So those are things that uh, carry small weight, and I think video testimonials carries a lot of weight. So once we have the advocate stage. Okay, I give you the formula to do it. You do the affiliate stage. Affiliate means, very simple, how can you turn your best customers into your marketing partners? That's it. So how can you turn your best customer into marketing partners? So you need to build your brand promoters, referral programs, affiliate, internal champions, value added with sellers. Now, I want you to think and see. There are probably two to three very huge businesses in Malaysia that does this so well. Okay? And maybe I'll ask you now. Can you name me two industries that do not pay their staff money, but 
the people are willing to work for them uh, for very long term. Two industry in Malaysia that the company doesn't pay money to the employee, but they are willing to work for them uh, in return. Yeah, and I, I, I'll talk about this. Yeah, uh, brand promoters, uh, Grab drivers. Mm, yes, those are profit sharing. But they, they don't actually build your brand. They just work for you. So it's not part of the brand promoters. Real estate agent, correct. Real estate agent, they go out, they market for you, and they promote your condo, your house, your apartment, and only get paid when they have a sales. Think about it, real estate agent. One more. Insurance, correct. Insurance, bank, credit cards, all these salespeople, they don't, or maybe some of them get basic, but most of them don't get basic. They have high commission. Now, they are doing so successful. They are multi-billion dollar industry, right? How about our small businesses? We also can do the same thing. When people have used our product, used our services, we can have referral programs, we can have affiliates, we can have internal champions, the one that recommend me the most customers in a month, I will fly you to Bangkok, I will fly you to Australia, I will fly you to London, for example. So these are things that you can build this inside your business and you'll get a lot of uh, growth. Yeah. So... We have completed this. So this is what we call the value journey of a customer. Every customer, no matter how you buy things, you probably go to awareness stage, engage stage, subscribe stage, conversion stage, sales, and then after that, advocate, and then after that, affiliate. Just like I mentioned just now, name me a burger brand. You mentioned Romney, you mentioned McDonald's, chicken, KFC. Automatically, you're talking about advocating the brand, but they don't pay you, right? So these are things that we are all built in uh, in our everyday life. So this is one to share with you that you can build in your business. So for example, this is, uh, let's make it into a real life case example here. If today I'm marketing my product, I will run an ad. I can put my content on Google so that I can rank on SEO. And I can do a referral program. Okay, this is a better stage. And then as a customer, you read my blog, you click on the ad, you watch my video, you engage with whatever content that I have. And then when you engage with the content, you will subscribe. So when you go to YouTube, most people will say, if you like this video, please subscribe, click the notification button and blah, 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 correct or not? So after you engage, you want to be subscribed to them. Or if you uh, if you really like them, then you have the conversion stage where you make a small purchase or you schedule a demo and customers really get the value from an initial transaction before they commit into a, a, a big sale, a call for sales. And after the call for sales, you can do product one, product two, product three, up to you to cross sell, upsell. When you have relationship with your customer, it is so nice to do business. You are not, you know, be known as a sleazy salesman. The moment when somebody calls you, hey, Charles, I want to meet up with you for a coffee. Why, eh? Oh, it's okay, I miss you on a coffee. The moment you go there, they'll talk about this product, you get them pissed off, you get them turned off. You know why? Because they are doing the sequence wrong. They're from awareness stage, straight away try to sell you. So when moment when we become a product or we become a salespeople kind of, uh, you know, um, money to the person, we get very defensive, right? No? But the moment when we got so much value, you probably ask, hey, give me more. I want to know what you're doing. Charles, tell me more what you're doing. I love what you're doing. Can you tell me more? So this is where it's very different how you do marketing compared to other people. This really makes sense. And people love you. The moment you ask them to come, they will come. Yeah. And so this, I'll give you an example of how I do it in my company. I run Facebook, I run SEO, okay? So when they engage, they click on an ad, they, they will engage more information and customers register webinar. Now, sometimes I do this, let's say I want to sell things, but today I'm not selling anything. So but I want to share with you, it might look the same process, but it's totally two different things here. Yeah? Today I'm adding value to you all. But sometimes I will sell things, I'm very, very targeted to sell. And when people register for the webinar, they attend the webinar, I will do my sales talk there, and I say that, hey, you're most welcome to join me, and this is where they decide to join me or not. So this is where the conversion stage, I deliver the aha moment, they can join me by TVET or certification or degree or master's, depending. After what they do, they join me, I give them value, advocate stage, and hopefully in the future, they become affiliate where they will market for me, and we do profit sharing. Does that make sense? So you need to build this for your company. You need to break it down stage, stage by stage, for your business, all right? So the goal is this. The goal is to document one value journey for each avatar, okay? One value journey for each avatar. 
So if you're targeting, like for example, we have so many products, right? If I'm targeting training program for corporates, it will be a different value journey. If I'm targeting students or employees, it will be a different value journey. So you cannot combine all together. You need to be different from one uh, to another. So document one value journey for each avatar and customer. So in digital marketing, I like to call it, if you want to build a successful digital marketing, you have these three growth tribe. Number one, number one, uh, you need to have a documented journey. You need to document every single thing that you do. And uh, you need to have actionable metrics. You need to document your metrics, what you use, whether you use Facebook, whether you use TikTok, whether you use SEO, whether you use telemarketers, whether you use uh, events. You need to have uh, metrics, okay, the numbers, the metrics, yeah? And then, of course, you need to have the latest tools, the latest tactics that are working today. Uh, things changes very, very fast, especially in the digital world. So if you only have documented journey and actionable metrics, but you don't have the latest tools and techniques, you'll probably be stuck in a month. Then you'll say, oh, last time, uh, you know, uh, Facebook can do like this. Today, you cannot do like that. You'll be stuck in a month. You cannot progress because you're not using the latest tools, the latest techniques, like what I mentioned, ChatGPT just now, earlier. Uh, if you have the latest tools, you have the documented journey, but you have no metrics to fall back on, you'll be like a bull in a china shop. Bull in a china shop means like a bull in a glass shop. They just bang everything. And you probably be successful, but I guarantee you, you cannot duplicate, you cannot scale. Again, let me repeat that. If you have documented journey and tools and techniques, and you do not know what's your metrics, you do not know what's the cost to acquire one customer, for example, you'll be bull in a china shop, you'll be blind in your marketing. Now, if you have actionable metrics and tools and techniques, but you do not document, you probably have only one hit wonder. You probably think, hey, I used to do this very well, but I cannot duplicate anymore. And this is very common when you run Facebook ads. I've seen a lot of people. When they run Facebook ads, they do not document, uh, sorry, uh, correct. they do not document, they do not write down what works, they do not uh, identify what works, and then they try to duplicate it, but they can't because it's only a one hit wonder. So if you have all three, documented journey, actionable metrics, the latest tools and techniques, then you're a champion in your marketing, okay? So what do I mean by documented journey? So documented journey means you actually uh, document every single stage here. So this is where from awareness, I share with you up to the every stage. You can work backwards, you can work from front to back, back to front, it is totally fine because right now you can know every, everything, every stage. And actionable metrics is you calculate the cost or the numbers in every stages. So in this case, it will be like awareness, it can be page views, uh, engage, how many people message, you know, in, in, in this case, Facebook, how many comments that you get, how many PM, DMs that you get, how many subscribers that you get uh, in the conversion stage, how many people attend the webinar or attend a one-to-one -one, or attend a phone call or attend a meeting where you can deliver the aha moment to have the sales. Does that make sense? So everything, everything is calculated. Everything, you have a target, you have your monthly target, monthly goal, and then you have your weekly, you break it down into weekly. So this is what I call actionable metrics. You jot down everything, becomes a system in your marketing. And of course, the tools and techniques, uh, of course, the latest one will be AI today, but uh, end of the day, this is more important for you. Whatever marketing that you do, you don't be overwhelmed. Small can be good, big can be good. But you need to have clarity. And this is where I want to share with you. Clarity is critical. Every stage here, if you can just focus on it, you don't have to do everything. You can just do one stage at a time, one quarter, one month, do one stage. You technically can duplicate 256 growth. Okay? So if you have, uh, in this case, 8 to the power of 2, you have 256 growth. Okay? But what if you can just do 2x1? So for me, when you take this back, see what stage can you go and scale it up, okay? One stage at a time. Do you need more awareness? Do you need to be an authority? Do you need to be a thought leader? Do you need to work on your aha moment? Do you need to, you know, fine tune your process of sales when you have the person in front of you and you want to say things and you want to convert, like, for example, 10 people that you meet, you can close five. And five to maybe six or seven people, just a difference by two extra, Will increase your conversion by 20%. And end of the day, you know how much value in sales that brings. So one stage at a time. 
uh, focus on it. You don't have to do everything. I want to share with you how you can use ChatGPT for customer value journey. So whatever that we have learned here, actually ChatGPT can also do it for you. You just need to give you the prompts. I don't give you the prompts here. Yeah? So let's say uh, I am running a durian business. OK. Since I talk about durian, so I'm going to do it very randomly. Let's say I'm running a durian business in Malaysia. And I want to invite people to my farm to purchase my durian. Okay, the idea is to invite people to the farm to purchase my durian. Now, for disclaimer's sake, I don't have a durian farm. I'm just doing it live in front of you. So I do not know what's the result that will come out. Uh, you can just ask Google, uh, sorry, ChatGPT, can you build a customer journey map for me, please? Enter, and it will start building for you. So it says here, sure, a customer journey map. I hope you can see as we go along. In the awareness stage, this is a stage where potential customers learn about a farm. You might attract them to social media advertisement, Google search ad, influencer post, local newspaper, word of mouth referrals. Consideration stage. Once customers are aware of your farm, they will research and evaluate whether you should visit your farm. So this is where they evaluate you. They need to see testimonials, right? They need to see whether you exist or not. And of course, different, you know, uh, value journey have different things, but it's almost the same. They make a decision whether the customer decides to visit your farm to facilitate the decision and ensure that the process of making reservation is there. So you need to have a reservation form in your website. Okay. Then after that, purchase. The customer purchases a durian. When they come to your farm, they purchase the durian. Uh, they can pick your own experience. You can do a buffet, buffet. You can do a lot of things. Then what about the post purchase or the advocacy or the affiliate stage? Depending on your business, yeah. Uh, you have to follow up your customer. It can be thank you email, message, ask for feedback, give them more discounts for the next visit, encourage them to come back, advocacy. If customers are happy with experience, they may be advocate for your business, blah, blah, blah. Not only they tell you the stages, they also give you ideas. So today, you see, uh, marketing is so easy if you know the right tools, the right problems, the right techniques to do it. Because end of the day, give itself one more year. This will be so common to everybody, yeah? But for now, you are attending my class. You are probably the first person who know this. Good for you. But the more important thing is to implement, all right? So I'll just share with you. Give you the prompt already using ChatGPT for customer value journey. So end of the day, you can, if you want more detail, you can actually create a customer avatar, tell, uh, feed a lot of information to ChatGPT, and then ask them to build a customer value journey. The one that I give you is a very, very basic prompt, which is good enough to get started. Okay, so I'm almost to my end. Uh, some of you are new in the group here. I just saw you, some of you I do not recognize, but I just want to spend about two minutes maximum to talk about myself. Uh, we are seven years already, combined experience, we have more than 48 years. We are award winners every single year. We win a major award, uh, acknowledging us to be one of the better companies in digital marketing training and certification. And over the last two, three, four years, uh, we have trained more than 3,000 people in the digital marketing industry. This was before COVID. Uh, earlier was during COVID. And right now, we have a mixture of both. So what I do, uh, like I mentioned, I do specialize in digital marketing training. I have to introduce myself. I'm Charles, the CEO and the founder of our DMC, and I'm here today just to share with you. That's it. Okay. If you're interested in diploma, if you're interested in the executive level, you're interested in executive masters also, uh, you can join me. So if you are interested, I'll just leave this for 30 seconds. If you need more information, you can just scan the QR code. Again, optional for you. Uh, I'm not hard selling. If you're interested to know more, scan the QR code. Uh, and also just to share with you, we also introduce our latest certification program. We call it Porsche Certification in AI-Powered Digital Marketing. It's a six days program run over a month. All the latest tools, techniques, using ChatGPT, uh, like, you, like I mentioned today, one small part of it will be inside there also, yeah? Which is the value journey of your customer, customer map, sorry. All right? So, um, now, this is what I want to share with you. This is the more, more important thing. What we are doing today is the first day launch of our online community by DMC. And uh, all of you today, 
welcome, welcome to the IFC champion. You are a champion for attending, and I just want to build a community again. Just want to add value, want to share our knowledge, our expertise with all of you. And the goal is this: yeah, uh, we want to build an online community of digital marketers with the aim to facilitate collaboration and knowledge sharing among our members to create a more informed and successful digital marketing and online business ecosystem. So we'll do this on a weekly basis. Um, and maybe for the start, I'll be sharing a lot, but in the future, I'll be inviting people to attend and it's all completely free. And why we are doing this? Because we want to create a supportive community. I want to give back to the community. It's already seven years since I've uh, started this business. I think I can give back. I want to foster collaboration, knowledge sharing, and I want to equip you with the best practice and tools, all right? Like what I've mentioned today. So uh, we have uh, weekly, monthly activities like webinars, discussion groups, creating sessions, tools and resource sharing so that you become a DMC champion, all right? So uh, I'm going to invite you all to my Telegram group. The Telegram group will be constantly updated with, you know, tips, tools, techniques, latest strategies on marketing like this. And if you want the, the uh, PDF today, please join my group. It's very simple. Uh, there's no need to pay anything. Uh, there won't be spammy kind of things. It's a very close group. And you are the first that I'm inviting. Anyway, just scan this, join my Telegram group, and I will see you there. Uh, can I ask a small favor? Yeah, as you are in a group, uh, in the future, if you see, you know, you have a lot of values and you want to invite people to come in, just uh, invite them to the group. Like, I think you can do that, okay? If you want to know more about us, we have a Facebook group. Just search for DMC Training. We have Instagram, DMC Training. We also have a YouTube where we share a lot of videos, probably like this. We also put it up in uh, DMC uh, Training Hub uh, YouTube channel under DMC. All right? So that's all. Have a good evening and bye-bye, everyone.